Hello survivors, it's Yeasty Goodness again. Uh, back with another design for Seven Days to Die. Got my testing world here in Novice Gain. It's another beautiful day. Um, just want to say thanks for all the feedback and all the love on Reddit and YouTube. I did not expect it to do as well as it did, so since everybody seemed to like that, here's another one. So today, what we're going to be doing is talking about bridge designs using non-centered poles. So I'm actually using the scrap iron poles, so the same ones that you use if you just type pole in here. And these I actually recommend uh, for a lot of uses. These are good enough. One, because they're cheap. Uh, they just 40 iron, which is plenty, just plentiful, and it's early, easily available early in the game. It's not locked behind any perks. You don't need any crafting stations. You can just, boom, make them right out of the gate as soon as you get some iron, which shouldn't be too hard to get. Um, you can use concrete because usually you don't need more than four or five blocks worth of these bridges to get the effect. So concrete works, and you can always upgrade the scrap iron to concrete or steel, you know, God forbid you need steel, but you can upgrade them later on. Um, so the thing is, we got three designs here today. I want to start with this one because this was the first one that I came up with. And this is uh, going to be a design that allows both players and bikes and zombies to cross. Although the zombies have a really tough time with it. Um, so the key to a lot of this and the thing that underpins all of these designs is the fact that the AI, the zombie AI, sees these pole blocks as full solid blocks that it can walk on. But obviously they fall right through, just like you do. So yeah, whoop, whoop, see, you even saw me, right. So this one is good for player entrances as well. Uh, it might be good for early on or if you're new to making bases. So this one will allow you to pass if you're sprinting so if you're just walking oh you might right you might make it across a couple of them but you'll probably fall on one of them but if you're sprinting then right you make it across and here i've got a mini bike let's see that's a decent enough engine so currently the ramp physics are a little wonky in the game but let's see if we Bring this over here. We don't ramp off of this. Oop, okay. You don't even have to be going that fast. You can cross right over it. So if you build your base right and you build a little depression underneath so that zombies have some place to fall, or you can just build this a little bigger, have a little bigger runway, you can, you know, ramp into your base. Or you can just drive right across it. Um, so you could potentially put like some doors right here because then what would happen is the so the full block that they see is right here and there'd be nothing for them to stand on if you used it kind of like this one where the block is directly adjacent that can give them a little platform to stand on and they might be able to beat down the door so let's just do a little test here to let's see let's spawn a couple of feral nurses whoops all right Oh. So sometimes they have trouble with some of these, but let's see, yeah, they generally don't make it, and yeah, we'll get to that one in a second. Jeez. Stop it. Okay, so you get the idea. You know, sometimes they do make it across, they get lucky, uh, they get fast, sometimes other ones behind them push them, and they make it there. So this is good for early design, and if you need to get into the, the entrance as well. However, I would much recommend that you build a separate entrance for you or your friends to enter, and then this one, and then one of either this one or this one as sort of a decoy for the zombies to use. Because again, they see it as a solid block that they can walk on, even when it's like this. So this design here is a little newer, and let's see. Oh, it's just right, so you can see that. Um, so now we're over here, and the idea is that by doing this, this design minimizes the amount of horizontal surface area. So it minimizes the amount of space that they have to run on, as well as creating this big gap in the middle. 
and this big gap between them. Now, the difference between this one and this one, and as well, the difference between this one and this design, is that instead of having the spacing being even, so if I copy the rotation here, you can see how every block has the same orientation. So it's just a pattern like this. But here, let's see if we copy the rotation, you can see that you're alternating the block facing every time. So every other block, it has an opposite orientation. And this seems to work by maximizing the amount of open space. And so it seems like this big gap between the two, I have yet to see a zombie make it across that. Even a feral at full speed, they don't make it across. Now the downside, obviously, for this one is that if mini bikes can't cross it because they can't jump and they'll fall between these two big, this big gap here. And players, you can see it's you know it's tricky you know it's a jumping puzzle and if you're being chased by something you don't want to engage in a jumping puzzle so let's go ahead and give this one a test so let's over here let's clean you up and we'll spawn a few nurses okay get their attention Right, so you can see some of them make it to there because the gap's not that big. But, yeah, and they like to go to the center because they think they're solid blocks. They just fall right down. Yeah. So. Alright, so that's that design. And over here, we've got... This is actually an earlier design that I came up with, but I actually think it might work... A little better. It might be a little more secure than this one. Yeah, fuck you. All right. So in this one, it's very much the same as this one, where you've got the alternating pole orientations, but this time they're vertical. Now this gives you the advantage of being able to control the height of your thing. Oh damn, he survived. All right. Eat it. All right. So with this one, like the other one, you have the alternating pole design. You can see it lines up there, but it's on the opposite side for this one. So this one has the benefit of being lower. So they think that it's big, and so you can see how I'm standing on that, but I'm lower than that. Yeah, I can't do that. So they will think that they can run straight across like it's a full solid block. So even if they do, oh, see, even I couldn't make it there. Let's see. There, whoa. Okay, all right, so I made it here. So here's where the real trick comes in, is that this set of blocks, or these set of poles, are offset to be higher than those. So even if they make it to here, even if they somehow manage to cross this big gap, which they usually don't, but even if they do, they're standing here, and they don't jump, and so they'll just keep going, and bam. So even if they don't fall like that, even if they might have made it, they still can't get there. They'll hit this, and they'll fall down, and then they just run back and try it again. So, let's go ahead and give this one a little test. Hopefully they won't get confused by the ramp. Alright, get their attention. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So they can't make it across. Most of the zombies will fall through this first gap. Oop. It's not beating on it. Yeah. Oh, come on. Alright. This is getting annoying. There we go. Alright, so. That is three different bridge designs that you can use. Um, some of these I would recommend for later in the game when you have more resources and you can build that. Um, so it seems like these even spacings will allow players and, and bikes and occasionally zombies to cross, whereas these designs that maximize the amount of open space will fool them into thinking that it's a big, solid bridge when really they just fall right through. Um, now... I have not tested this that extensively, 
but I've done pretty extensive testing and I have yet to have a zombie cross this even when there's a bunch of them um, so yeah uh, thanks for guys for watching and let me know what you think